First is Abigail Connors, who'll begin the event by talking about how literature affects our creativity and our lives. Please give Abby a warm welcome. There are 192,864,880 published books worldwide. There are over 192 million universes, worlds of pure imagination, places yet to be discovered by the likes of billions. There are over 192 million friends to make, characters to fall in love with, villains to admire or despise, and protagonists to cheer for. These books, adventures, romances, stories, are life-changing. The most minuet black scrawls on browning paper very literally change you. In a study done by Emory Center for Neuropolicy in 2013, neuroscientists were able to demonstrate how reading an engaging novel changes you. And by you, I am referring to your brain. The three-pound bundle of neurons and intricately beautiful mechanisms that account for 2% of your physical form account for 100% of you. In the study, participants were asked to read 30 pages of, a, of the book Pompeii, a thriller written by Robert Harris, chosen due to its particularly strong writing and powerful narrative. At nighttime, they read the 30 pages, and then in the morning, underwent an fMRI scan. An fMRI, or functional magnetic resonance imaging, is a technique used to detect neuronal activity based on oxygenation and blood flow throughout the brain. Hence, using this technique, they were able to demonstrate that despite the fact the participants weren't actually reading while in the scanner, they showed a heightened amount of connections in the left temporal cortex, in the area of the brain involved in language and linguistics, as well as in the central sulcus, the primary sensory region of the brain. This area of the brain has a very unique purpose. It's used to create a sort of false reality. For example, you can close your eyes and imagine you are riding a bike. You can sense you're riding the bike, but you're not actually riding the bike. This effect is known as embodied cognition. Another study done in Liverpool demonstrated how poetry enhances activity in the right side of the brain, particularly in an area involved in autobiographical memory. With this in mind, it is evident that literature forces the brain to reevaluate its own experiences and to connect them to what's being interpreted or what's being read. This is because when you read, the area of your brain that is stimulated is involved in holding the recordings of your life, what makes you, you. Other studies have shown how reading can help enhance memory because it increases the amount of connections and can help make us better analysis. The brain is akin to a muscle. It must be trained and requires work and exercise in order to perform at its maximum potential. With reading and writing, the connections in our brain are multiplied, enhancing our overall cognitive performance. Because these increase activity in the cortex and sensory regions, we are strengthening, developing our mammalian brain, the area of our brain used for higher level thinking, the most evolved aspect of any brain in known existence. Through reading and writing, we are becoming more evolved. We are separating ourselves even further from our reptilian-minded predecessors. But literature affects us on a much deeper level. It doesn't just better us biologically. This effect can be summarized in one word, albeit a very important word, empathy. Empathy is essential in being human. Said to be located in the supermarginal gyrus in the parietal lobe, empathy is what allows us to form connections, to interact with one another. It is empathy that allows for friendships and bonds to blossom. It allows us to understand another human and be understood in return. Our connections with the emotion of another human or alien species for science fiction lovers connects to the theory of mind, 
which lets us walk two moons in another's moccasin. Although the theory of mind is pretty complex and a bit too philosophical for this TED talk, it can be supported by my earlier statement that when you read and when you write, the areas of your brain that are stimulated are involved in sensory abilities or visualization. Through visualization and empathy, one can very literally feel what the character in the novel is feeling. Their actions, their thoughts, their emotions are projected onto you, and you begin to feel the same way. For example, in The Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling, when Harry Potter first wrote a hippogriff and soared through the sky, feeling deep companionship and trust with Buckbeak, we too felt connected to that fantastic beast. Characters allow us to feel new things. They allow us to look within and discover compassion, to feel things we thought we were once incapable of. And because of this, we can take on their experiences. We can learn from them. This is because if fiction were a mirror, our fictional characters would be on the side of reality. They would be projecting light, and we would be the reflection. Hence, protagonists, they change us. Villains, they shape us. We can take on their thoughts and actions and be more prepared for when we are faced with certain situations in reality. This allows us to react wisely and ensures that we make correct decisions. Now, we crave this experience. We desire to feel empathy. When we read and when we write, we are really just seeking companionship. We, we love to feel loved. We love to love another person. That is the most basic characteristic of humanity. And we can feel this with fictional characters. For example, in John Steinbeck's East of Eden, I associate Samuel Hamilton is a sort of grandfatherly figure. He's very wise and gives great advice, and I'm often reminded of him. When a character feels a loss, when they feel something, you feel it too. And this is why you smile or you laugh or you cry. Have you ever cried while reading a book? Have you ever cried while watching a movie? Did you cry in the deathly hollows as Snape muttered his final always, proclaiming his everlasting love for Lily Potter? Because I sure did. <laughs> Many, including myself, form deep bonds with fictional characters. With this in mind, it is obvious how important it is to write. Writing is the ability to create these characters, to stir emotions within someone. Writing requires all of the brain functions mentioned to an even greater extent, because one is not only perceiving, they are creating. Writing is the ability to reach out and touch the soul of another human. It is the ability to make them laugh or to make them cry, or you can open their eyes to the immense amount of impossible possibilities. As a child, I fell in love with writing when I could create friends or heroes or villains that I felt that I was myself. This is because when I write, I assume a godlike state. I become the creator of worlds and societies. I can kill or harm, or I can dream up a world so beautiful it pains you. But most importantly, I am searching. As I write, I am discovering. I am discovering what it means to be human because I have created one. Through my characters, I observe personalities and human nature because I am reflecting my own perception of being into what I have created. I once wrote about a girl named Hedvig. She was so curious to understand the whole world and everything that it contained that she had to commit horrendous acts and had to pay for them in response. She lived in an ideal land with glistening rivers and bustling people who loved one another. I made them. I created them. I was responsible for the smell of waffles that drifted through her village on Sunday morning, and I created the stars that hung next to her moon. I determined that. I controlled that. I controlled her fate just as I can my own. 
It is basic human nature to create. That's what makes us so fantastic. We spend our whole lives in search of something, in search of happiness, companionship, truth. Every day, we look for purpose, we look for meaning. If we wish to, we can find it by creating a story, by creating our own story, by creating versions of ourselves not composed of elements or stardust, but brain power, of pure human greatness. And so why does this matter? Why does discovering the hidden secrets of the universe matter? Isn't that why you're all here? So if you wish to find the purpose of you, of the world, of everything, start by reading a book. Start by jotting down your 3 a.m. thoughts. Journey to worlds unbeknownst to you or any soul in existence. Or dream up your own universe and give it mysteries of its own. No matter what, what you read and what you write will assist you on this endless journey to bettering ourselves and our world on all levels. Thank you.